Welcome to worship at Trinity United Methodist Church in Hutchison, Kansas. My name is Kim Beery. I'm the associate pastor here serving with our senior pastor, Craig House Shield. In the name of the Lord, we welcome you. Please take a moment to fill out the red folder you'll find in the pew, and you can pass it on down the row. And perhaps after the service, you can maybe meet a new friend and put a name with a face. The Table Project continues in our worship series. It's so interesting and wonderful that if you see in this next picture, there's one of our groups around the table. So I tell you what, if you want to send a picture of you around the table with your friends or your family, just email it to the church office or you can text it to Craig and I. Uh, we want to see the tables that you are surrounding. Also, Vacation Bible Camp is starting tomorrow. It's time. And we want to encourage everyone here to show up on Friday evening at 6 p.m. We're going to have a special program so you can see what's been happening all week. And then also there's a grab-and-go campfire dinner provided. So put that on your calendar so you can see how wonderful the week has gone. Also, next week there's a special offering for Meals on Wheels, um, those serving those who are unable to prepare their own food. So you can put that on your calendar also. We're taking orders for our Love God, Love People shirts. The deadline is the end of this month, so if you want to order one, just go down to the church office today or during the week and put in your order. <coughs> Trinity Family Olympics is coming up August 4th, so it's going to be a fun night on a Sunday evening at 5 p.m. We're going to be down in the Warner Wing. Um, all ages are encouraged to come. If you don't have a family, we are a family, so just come on and show up, and we're going to have a time of competition and ice cream. It's going to be a fun evening. Also, the Casting Crown concert is coming up Wednesday, September 11th, and if you want to buy a ticket, there are three left. So run down to the church office right after this service if you'd like a ticket. Uh, also, put on your calendar a, an opportunity to serve in our community, which is the uh, United Way Workday coming up on August 24th. Uh, so you can see, you can uh, sign up on the website of the United Way Work, uh, Reno County, or if you need some help, just come in the church office and we'll get you signed up. But again, that's Saturday, August 24th for a time to serve our community. And then today we want to announce that Chris Oldham, our Trinity's Coordinator of Children's Ministries, will be relocating and moving with her family to uh, Al Alamos, Colorado. So we want to uh, send her off with a wonderful love gift for the years of serving and ministry here. So if you'd like to give towards that, you can put uh, a love offering on your check. So as we come together, we know that worship is all about God. So come, let us worship God together.
Let us stand for the call to worship. How are you this morning? You have come to the right place. Rest for a minute. Take a deep breath and let it out slowly. Just relax and let your hearts be open to God's word for you. That sounds good to us. Feel the healing, soothing power of God's love for you. Lord, we rest, we rest our, our minds, minds spirits, spirits, and, and hearts in your, your compassionate, compassionate love. love. Amen. Amen. Let us lift up the people's prayer together. From the demands and pressures of this past week, we come, O Lord, seeking rest and renewal. Hear the cries of our hearts, our prayers, our needs. Heal and restore us, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Each week we gather to pray together, sharing our journeys, the, the good times and the hard times and the in-between times. We share in many ways. Uh, there is a form or a card that you can fill out in the pew if you'd like to share a prayer need and put in the offering box in the back so that uh, the pastors and the care team uh, can pray over your request. Also, Pastor Craig and I are available after the service if you have a prayer need you want to share or you'd like to pray. Another way we communicate is through our bulletin, and, um, and we will need to lift up health concerns for Andrew West's dad, and then also Steve Childs is in the hospital. So as we think about some of these prayer needs, maybe you bring today um, a kind of a, a uh, hurting in your soul that needs to be healed. So come, let us prepare for prayer. Patient Lord, we schedule our lives down to the very second. We crowd in as much activity as we can and then wonder why we're so stressed out and tired. We are afraid to miss out on anything. And when it comes to time to be with others, we spend our time worrying about the details rather than longing for the visit. Forgive us when we get so caught up in the details and miss the opportunity to sit at your feet, learning, listening, growing in our faith. Help us to place ourselves in your care. Slow us down a bit so that we can see the wonders you've placed before us and truly enjoy the blessings you have given us. Lord, we pray for peace and the end of violence. May kindness and cooperation become intertwined in the actions of our leaders. We pray for those who are hurting and sick. 
bring healing, O oh God. We pray for those who are mourning the loss of a loved one, bring them comfort. Let hopelessness be transformed into hope. Let our VBC week be led by the Holy Spirit as we love and teach God's children. Inspire us through the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. children are on vacation today. They're getting ready to come to vacation Bible school tomorrow. So it's just you and I. So you're going to get to help me today. We hope that our kids that are joining us online will um, see this later. But okay, so I have a confession. I get really, really hungry during church. And sometimes I really have trouble making it through the sermon. I'm not going to lie. I get it. Yeah, yeah. And so today I just decided, you know, it's VBC week. I'm just going to bring a little snack with me. So I stopped at McDonald's for my guilty pleasure, which is a cheeseburger. I mean, it always tastes the same. It's amazing. So just pardon me. I've got my straw. I've got some napkins. Let's see. I've got my salt and pepper. I've got my ketchup and mustard. Um, well, I was so into getting all the things to go with my cheeseburger, I kind of forgot my cheeseburger. <laughs> I mean, that was kind of the most important thing, and I forgot it. This really is probably not going to satisfy me much, but I don't know, I may have to just have some ketchup and mustard. 
Oh, that's true. I could make tomato soup or mustard soup. Well, I mean, this is kind of goofy, but, you know, there was another person in the Bible who kind of forgot the main thing, too, that we're going to be hearing about today. You've heard the story, probably, of Mary and Martha. And, man, this is a tough one for me. Okay, so we all know Jesus and his disciples are traveling, and they come to the home where Mary and Martha lived. And Mary starts going crazy and and cleaning and and preparing the meal and doing all the things. I'm sorry, Martha. Sorry. Martha's going crazy. You all knew. Mary is sitting with Jesus listening. Raise your hand if you've ever struggled with this story. Okay, so you're all Martha's. All right, same. Okay, so, you know, Martha was pretty upset. And she said to Jesus, tell her to help me. And what did Jesus say? He said, Martha, you're worried and troubled about too many things. Only a few things are important, perhaps just one. And Mary has chosen that one thing. And I'm not going to take it from her. So let me ask, what are things that you spend a lot of your time busy doing? Just shout them out. What take... What did you say, Peggy? <laughs> okay, pulling weeds. Okay. Yeah. Um, does anybody have to spend time cooking? Yeah. Does I, okay, Scott, you raise your hand. Yeah, that's how it is at my house, too. Although, Renee, you, yeah, you, I was going to say you cook, too. Um, does anybody take care of kids or grandkids? Does anybody spend time doing this? You know what I'm doing. (laughs) Scrolling? All right. Okay. So all of those are really good things, right? But sometimes they do tend to take away from the most important thing, which is Jesus. Would you all pray with me? Dear Jesus, help us to remember that you are the most important thing in our lives. Don't let us get so busy with other things that we forget to spend time with you. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
Hear the story about Mary and Martha as recorded in Luke 10, beginning with verse 38. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat at Jesus' feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things, but few things are needed, indeed only one. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. I have to admit, I kind of like the idea of bringing a cheeseburger to church. <laughs> right? Right? That's, that's not bad. Though I must admit, it's a little early for a cheeseburger. Just a bit. Um, I've also... Um, some of you are in the wrong service, and it's really messing me up. <laughs> um, so if you have been coming to 1045, I would like for you, if you would, just go ahead and go and wait. No, I'm just kidding. I, 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 I get to know you by where you sit. You're messing me up. So I, I'll adjust. I'll adjust. Do you ever have trouble getting your brain to calm down? Hmm? Yeah. The worst is when you go to bed, right? And, and you, you can't stop thinking. It just keeps popping into your head. You lay there going over what you didn't get done. Or you think about all the things that you did get done and maybe you should have done them differently. Hmm? Or... Maybe, perhaps, uh, it just pops into your head about that load of laundry that you may or may not have started that morning that really needs to go into the dryer, you know, just random things. And so finally, you get up and you check the washer only to discover that you didn't even sort the laundry to begin with. Because you started the dishwasher instead, you know. Just, poo. I have an office, um, really an entire church building, that is a huge distraction to me. There are too many options. Now, the books in my office are on the shelves, thanks to my lovely spouse. But every once in a while, I'll be sitting at my desk, and I'll spot a book, and I'm like, why is that book there? That book that book needs to go over with those books. And so I'll get up and I, I, I then I spot other books that aren't in the place that I like either. And so I get up to move them only to find, you know, others. And then as I'm moving books, I saw, spot some boxes that, that need to be broken down and re recycled. So I stop what I'm doing and I go to the church basement for... Uh, the, 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 the recycle bins and the carts we have down there so I can bring it back upstairs only to notice, and this happened to me this week, only to notice a room that I haven't been in yet. And I, right, right, and so I go to the room and I jiggle the knob and it's locked. Well, I can't pass this up, so I go up to my office because my keys aren't in my pocket. They're laying on my desk, and so I head back to my office for the keys when what to my wandering eyes should appear as I walk through my office with a pile of pictures that are waiting to be put on the wall. Now, I have created a drawer in my office that's like my toolbox, and in that drawer are command strips that I'm going to use to hang the pictures on the wall. And so I go to the drawer, I pull it open, I look in, and what to my wondering eye should appear but a granola bar. <laughs> now, what is a granola bar doing in my toolbox? But it gets me to thinking, hmm, there are cookies in the, the, high, the common ground kitchenette, and you know, a cookie and a cup of coffee sounds pretty good. 
So I look over to my desk and I get my coffee cup, right? You're with me on this. I get my coffee cup and I turn too quickly and I hit the ladder. Well, then that gets me to thinking that that ladder's there. I'd really like to get it out of the office because people walk in and they look at me weird. Like, why do you have a, a ladder in the middle of your floor? So I, I, I think, you know, maybe before I get the cookie and the coffee, I'll take the ladder and I'll put some things up in those cabinets that I can shut because there are some things I still don't want you all to see yet. And like, like, like my stuffed Grinch with the matching flashing lights. I, 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 it's too much to explain to you. So, so I, 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 I move the ladder and, oh, my phone is vibrating. Hmm, I wonder what's going on. You see where I'm going with this? Right? You, you nailed it, Carrie. Yeah, you nailed it. When I said that, when, when Carrie saw that this was going to be today's topic, she said, oh, I don't like that. You know, well, Carrie, I suffer from the same condition. Trust me. It is exhausting being me some days. John Pavlovitz, who I'm utilizing during this series, um, he writes in one of his devotions called Rise. He says this. He says, years ago, a pastor told me I had a dancing mind which was a kind of way, a way of saying I never stopped thinking. This trait has been an asset during brainstorming sessions. I love brainstorming sessions. Planning meetings, I love doing planning meetings, where I'm able to cycle through a myriad of options, though it is less helpful when I'm trying to focus or fall asleep, making either task a perpetual challenge. Having a twirling, gyrating brain is especially difficult in those times when I need to be fully present. When what is most pressing is the moment and the person that is in front of me. I can easily miss both of them because I am usually being pulled out of that moment and into countless possibilities of what might be happening elsewhere or what I could be doing, or what is coming. I've often failed to witness my life in real time. I have often failed to witness my life in real time. Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever failed <laughs> to witness your life in real time? You become so focused on details and the swirling around you stuff that you forget to focus on what is most important. <laughs> Let me give you another instance. I really love the idea of having people over for dinner. You caught that. I love the idea of having people <laughs> over for dinner <laughs> but I will tell you that I can turn into a mean green fighting machine and I inserted here an amen from my wife Dana amen if she were here she would shout out amen I know she would you see when we invite folk over for dinner I want things uh, to be just a certain way in my house uh, I want things just so before anyone walks in. Chances are I will overthink the menu a number of different times. I want certain ambiance when you walk through my door. Perfection, not so much. A sense of order, definitely. Once guests arrive, I busy myself in the kitchen, unfolding the plan for how this dinner will go. I get discouraged if something doesn't come out of the oven looking like the picture in the book. You know? <laughs> Those pictures are fake. I know they're fake. Here, artificial intelligence is creating the image of what that lasagna should look like. You can't. I, I get discouraged if I didn't get to the bathroom in time to shine the chrome. Yes, I am that crazy before someone uses my privy, you know? My kids and wife will tell you, stay out of my way. 
if I'm in entertainment mode. I guess you could say that I too, Carrie, become a bit like Martha from our reading this morning. Martha invites Jesus to her table. She is, uh, I guess you could say, the hostess with the mostess. I don't know where that phrase came from, but I thought it was appropriate. But unlike her sister Mary, Martha misses what's most important. But there is hope for people who are wired like Martha and me. Pavlovitz tells it like this. He says, I grew up hearing this story of two sisters welcoming Jesus and learned almost immediately that Mary was the hero, right? That's the way it feels at least. Able to simply sit and be with Jesus. He says, I was told in countless sermons, be like Mary, but I've always had a soft spot for Martha because I understand what it is to be worried and distracted by the task in front of me, to have a well-meaning heart and a mind that gets ahead of it. I realized that she too had invited Jesus into her home and that her intention was to be a gracious and hospitable host. Jesus isn't scolding Martha here. He's just reminding her and the rest of us that here is the only place we are required. Here with our family or our partner or our friends or whomever we are sharing this present moment with. You may not be a victim of a dancing mind. Instead, you might have an unsustainable pace, or an overcrowded calendar, or an unreasonable expectation of yourself that makes you prone to missing what's right in front of you. Pavlovitz says, today resist the frenzy and the obligations and the performative and be here. The image I have today of the Martha incident, if this were to unfold at at a, a table today, the image I do have is of Jesus at the table with his followers, with his disciples, and he's trying to talk with them, but they are all engrossed, aren't they? They, they are all engrossed. What was that you said, Jesus? Right? Hold on just a minute. I got a text. Oh, higher ground. Let us see. Matt is going to play bass today. Hey, Jesus, Matt's going to play bass. Oh, some things came up. I wonder. You ever seen a meal like this before? Huh? You ever been sitting in a restaurant and you look over at that table of of four or five and one is sitting there trying to engage and the other three are like this? (laughs) I've been known to sit in a meeting and suddenly my phone calls me. It doesn't really call me, but I just need it, right? Imagine Jesus at the table and all of his disciples are, are, are checking their, their text messages or are watching YouTube videos. It's as if they're physically together but mentally distant, absorbed in their own little digital worlds. Friends, our call to expand the table of Christ, to make the table bigger, that's our call. And the table project that we are immersed in as Christ followers here at Trinity cannot happen only with an invitation. I saw a statistic this week that said about 86% of the people who find a church home are are invited by someone, usually face-to-face. 86%. But friends, it's not just about the invitation. We have to be present. When we choose not to be, the the tragedy is we are limiting the powerful expression of God's grace and love. 
So we don't do that. Jesus modeled three things. The first thing we've already talked about, Jesus emphasized being present with others. When he sat with his disciples, he was fully engaged. He was listening, he was teaching, he was sharing life. And that, my friends, is harder for some of us which is why we form a community to do this thing together. Some of us need more help at being present with others. And that's why we are building a bigger table, but we're not doing it on the isolation, we're doing it together. The second thing is that if Jesus were at our table today, he would encourage us to prioritize relationships to prioritize relationships over details, over shiny chrome in the bathroom, over how the lasagna looks or what is popping up on our screens. People matter more than notifications or all the details. Prioritize relationships. And finally, Jesus advocated for balance. It wasn't that Martha was doing anything wrong. It wasn't that someone didn't need to put the lasagna in the oven and make sure it didn't burn like I burned my steaks this week on the grill and created a fire and almost had to call 911. <laughs> That's not it. I burned those things to a crisp, let me tell you. Jesus advocated for balance. That's it. Practice radical hospitality. Radical hospitality. Put out the food, the refreshments, decorate if you want to, do more, but not to the point of neglecting the personal relationships. Advocate for balance. So, for all my VBS, VBC friends in this room this morning who are thinking, I wonder if I have enough decorations for my room. It doesn't matter. What you need to be is present with the kids this week. You need to be present with them, share the journey. And now, step back, Chris. Step back, Carrie. Step back and just let it be. And that's what we need to do as we build the table bigger and bigger. Be present, engage with those around us, seek deeper connections. And when we do, watch out. That table is going to need more and more and more leaves. Don't you think? I certainly hope so. Let's pray. Holy God, we give you thanks this morning for your call to build the table bigger, to welcome, to welcome all, and to seek to find a place for all of us to be. Some of us are wired differently than others. Some of us can sit and be in the presence of another person and give our total focus there. And sometimes though we, we get distracted. So teach us God the better way and help us to be present with each other in this space right now and present as we go forth into the world, seeking to love and share your peace and grace with those around us. Guide us and lead us in that way we pray in Jesus name, amen.
Part of worship is giving back to God. So as we lift up our time of offering, remember that your financial giving supports the ministries of Trinity, like the soup kitchen and our volunteers that served yesterday. Thank you. We did our part to feed the hungry in our community in a small way. So when we give, God's ministries are furthered and productive. You can give in many ways. You can give through our Venmo account or through our website or the mail. You can go back in the back and there is an offering boxes back there and you can put your offering there or you can set up automatic deposits through the church office. May you be blessed as uh, you give today and in the days ahead. And as we respond to this continuous giving, let us lift up the prayer of thanksgiving together. God of eternity, we bring our gifts before you in all these various ways. Even as we are worn out and glazed over from the endless pursuit of the endless to-do list, we have crammed our lives full of activity and busyness, missing the opportunity we have today to be in your presence, bathe in your love, and open our souls to be filled, renewed, and restored by your presence. Help us to bring our whole being as our gift to you, that we don't miss the precious gift that you have offered to us, a relationship through Jesus Christ in that name that is above all others, we pray. Amen. Pastor Kim, do you see that clock up there? I do. And, and what's it say? It's 9.34. You're early. 9.34. Yeah. I had just gone up a notch, and, <laughs> you know, I'm no longer, like, down here in Pastor, so I just kind of moved up a bit. You did. Uh -huh. Good job. So let's just talk back and forth for 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, so here's my question to you. You're going to get 10 minutes. You're going to get 10 minutes. So what are you going to do with that extra 10 minutes today? Hmm? What are you going to do? That I liked, I heard someone say, be present. You got 10 minutes to do that. 10 extra. So if I don't stop soon, they won't have 10. <laughs> but think about the time you do have. And think about how you can make a difference in someone else's life. But just being there with them listening, taking it in. Not all of us are wired that way, but I'll do my best. 
friends, go from this place knowing that the God of grace and all love goes with you. Go in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, our creator, our redeemer, our sustainer. Amen.